But where is your heart? Where do you want your heart to be? Do you want your heart to be towards Jesus Christ? To spend time with Him? To, you know, talk to Him? To, you know, study the things that He wants you to know? Or, you know, are you more concerned with flipping through Netflix and seeing what you can watch for the next two hours to, you know, keep busy? So I would just say, talk to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him what He wants you to remove from your life. Um... I've burned up music, uh, old secular music, metal, uh, rap, whatever, anything that didn't glorify God, you know, because there's a lot of hidden witchcraft and a lot of uh, lewdness, a lot of just materialism, all kinds of messed up stuff in that music. I burned up uh, a lot of comic books because they used to be an idol of mine. Um, you know, just ask the Holy Spirit what he, what what is hindering. The relationship, you know, what is standing in the way? We're just living in a very critical time where you want to be a thousand percent sure where you're going, why you're going there. You're going to heaven because Jesus performed the sacrifice that you weren't able to, uh, you weren't able to attain the perfection that God requires. So Jesus stood in your place, was mocked, beaten, whipped, uh, had his beard ripped out, uh, you know, nails through his, his wrists and his feet, crown of thorns, everything. He did that when it should have been you. Look at Barabbas. He was the murderer that, uh, I think it was Pilate, when Pilate was asking the Jews, you know, do you want me to hand over to you Barabbas, who was a murderer, or do you want me to hand over to you Jesus, the king of the Jews? And they asked for Jesus. And why is that? Because Jesus, who was innocent, was standing in the place of Barabbas, who was the murderer. That's the same with you and me. You know, all the sins that I've committed, all the sins that you've committed, we're guilty. Yet Jesus, being innocent, offers to stand in our place. Yet we have to accept him, believe in him through faith, and follow his word. You know, you don't just believe and then go... Uh, be a rock star, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing. But the Lord's really put it on my heart to share. Uh, it's not about condemnation, you know. To him who's in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Uh, it's about grace and mercy. What got my attention to become a Christian? Grace and mercy. I was a drinking, drugging, smoking sleeping around, uh, doing all this kind of stuff. And the mercy that God showed me was because I was in Iraq, I was unsaved, and uh, I was in a situation where I should have been blown up and killed. Yet, one way or another, God prevented that from happening. God prevented me from going to hell in that moment because I was not saved. I was not covered under the blood of Jesus in that moment. He had, uh, while I was a sinner... While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While, you know, all the time that, you know, prior to you being saved, He had mercy on you by not, you know, say, letting a car hit you. Uh, I, I don't know. There's so many instances where God has spared my life, whether it was uh, even when I was two years old. Um, it's kind of a long story, but my, my dad was an alcoholic and him and my mother went to a party and uh, they lost track of me. I was only two years old. You know, my dad was probably drinking and talking to somebody. My mom was, you know, probably talking to somebody wrapped up with something. And, uh, you know, I was in the D.C. area. I grew up in Arlington, Virginia. And when they found me next, I was on the other side of a four lane highway, Route 1, that goes through Arlington. Now explain that to me. This isn't just some country road, you know, this is four lanes of busy traffic, yet I as a toddler, a two-year-old, was on the other side untouched without a scratch. You know, so God has had mercy on me again and again and again. And that's how you that's how he wins a lot of people into the kingdom through mercy. But so many people ignore it. So many people are like, oh man, had a close call, and then they go back to you know, their crazy life the next week. 
God loves you and me beyond anything that we can describe. Uh, and he wants to have grace and mercy on us. You know, the same way the parables talk about, uh, you know, how he, you know, there was a guy with a, a great debt and, uh, you know, he's going to throw him into jail. But the guy was like, uh, please forgive me. I'll, I'll pay back to you everything that I owe you. And he forgave him that giant debt. You know, that's how Jesus wants to be towards us. He wants to forgive your debt. He wants to forgive your sin debt. He wants to cover you in the blood of Jesus and bring you into his kingdom to, you know, love you like a friend, to love you like, uh, you know, his own child. But until we come to him, trust in him, and turn from our wicked ways and repent, uh, you may still be outside of that relationship. Uh, and I'm not saying you are or you aren't. I'm not, I'm not here to condemn anybody, but you know, the truth is that, uh, you really need to examine where your relationship is. Don't let all these distractions steal your salvation from you. Uh, you know, when you're given all your time over to something else before you give it to Jesus, uh, you know, in the most simplest way to describe it, that's idolatry. And that's, you know, not something we're supposed to be doing. So, uh, sorry to ramble on, but you know, there's, that's a few things that I wanted to say. I just, I ask that you pray for me, pray for my wife, um, because Satan is throwing everything at me to try to prevent me from witnessing to you, from telling you about the grace and the love of God, from telling you about the end times events that are showing how close his return is. Uh, because I believe that he is still coming extremely soon, sooner than you, than you may think. So, uh, I just ask that you lift me up in prayer, uh, because I, I really feel exhausted. I feel like I'm burned out. I feel like I've given all that I have to give, but yet I want more so I can give more. You understand? I want more Holy Spirit. I want more oil so I can give it out to you so I can give it out to, you know, a stranger on the street that's in need. I want to show the love of Jesus to people, but I really feel like my, my fuel gauge is going, and I feel like I'm running on fumes. So if you could lift me up in prayer and, uh, I'd appreciate that, but just know that now is not the time to lose your focus. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling with everything I've got tooth and nail to stay on track because now is the time to be ready because Jesus, I believe, is coming so soon, so soon. So, sorry for the long, long ramble, but uh, it's better than no video, right? Ha <laughs> ha. See you next time.